there was the village. And in the village, there was the woman. And she was about to become a mother. And the way that she was going to become a mother was by giving birth to her first child. And she had just entered the labor of that giving birth. And she knew she needed help. So she sent word for the midwife to come. And of course, the midwife quickly came. And the midwife began to help the woman as she went deeper into the labor. For a labor is required for anyone to be born into this world. After a time, the moment came for the child to be born. What they call the crowning moment when the hidden crown of the child breaks from the inner world into the outer world. And at that moment, of course, the mother was wrapped up in the pains of labor and in the effort of it. And so she didn't notice the nature of the child she gave birth to. Everyone else there was so involved with helping the mother, they couldn't see really the child that came out. The only one who saw clearly what happened was the midwife. And the midwife had what used to be called second sight, so that she not only saw the fact that this child being born, this first child of that young mother was a boy, she also saw that that boy came into this world bearing gifts. That is to say, the child that was born in that crown moment had a green cape on its shoulders and it had a gourd in its hand that was full of water and the midwife saw these gifts that came into into the world when that child was born and she quietly took the green cape off the shoulders of the newborn and she took the gourd full of water from its hand and she hid those things and then she went back and continued to help the mother And everyone was relieved that the mother was healthy after the birth and the child looked healthy as well. And then they put the child together with the mother and everyone began to be quiet for they used to leave the mother and child alone for six or seven days so that they could find out about each other on the outside the way they already knew each other on the inside. And then after seven days, Everyone came to the hut of that woman in order to celebrate the birth, the health of the mother, but also to give a name to the child. And it used to be that everyone in the village would come and give the name to the child in order to celebrate that child because people knew that each child came into the world bearing gifts and they wanted each child to learn to give those gifts because after all when the children were given their gifts all the people in the village would be on the receiving end of those gifts so they had a personal interest in the children learning their gifts anyway they all came to celebrate and to have the naming ceremony and so when everyone arrived The name was given to the boy who was born on that day, and they gave him the name of Poder, Poder, which means ability, Poder, which means power, Poder, which means fortune, which means luck, Poder, which means fortune. They gave him that fortunate name, and when they gave it to them, everyone in the village repeated the name as if to make it real and as if to penetrate it into his little body, saying Poder loudly, saying Poder very softly until it echoed all through the village. Poder had come to join everyone there. And once the ceremony was over, everyone went back to their places and the midwife went to where she had hidden the gifts of Poder, the green cape and the gourd with water. And she took them and she left the village and she walked out into the holy hills that extended beyond the village. And when she went out there, she found some people and she gave them the gift that had born, been born with that child. And those people took the gifts and then they hid them away out there in the holy hills. And the midwife went back and the mother nursed the child and the child grew in the way that all children grow. And since it was a healthy child, he grew quickly and he grew well. Oh yes, he had his rough days and he had his good days. Like any child being born into the world, that's the way of this world is to have hard times and to have good times. And that's what happened to Poder as he grew and as he prospered as a child being affectionately cared for by his family and by the village and we will leave him there in the period of his growth in the absence of his gifts in the presence of the attention of his village until we ourselves come back again to this story later
So that's part one of the story. It's a birth story. It's a beginning story. It's a gift story. It's a genius story. And what they're trying to do, as happened in many cultures, is show this idea that each child that's born has poder. Poder is every child. That's what they're trying to say. Poder is also the Christ child. Notice the Christ story is exactly that. The one who comes in with the gifts. The one who the stars led the wise men to. It's all the same story. Some people make it into a religion, but it also could be a living practice of learning and finding one's stories and then uh, one's gifts and then helping others to do the same. At any rate, Poder represents that quality of the gifted child born. And so I want to just make some statements about the gifts and the talents are aspects of the genius. They're not the essence of the genius. In other words, there's a difference between the talent and the genius. Many people have the talent to play, let's say, a piano. And some people have the genius when they're playing the piano. And many of us can tell the difference. You go into a university or a school, and you have many teachers in there, and you also have many employees in there. The teachers bring out the genius in their children, and the employees pick up their checks. You know what I'm saying? It's a bit of a joke. They're all called teachers, but some are teaching, and others are just... You get it? <laughs> Teachers know that the genius is what's being sought. Genius refers to the spirit that's already there. That's the meaning of it. It's a Latin word, genius, but it really comes from North, North Africa where it was pronounced genie. And then you have, uh, in Latin, they say genus loci, uh, the spirit of the place. And so um, you have school spirit manifested you know, maybe the football stadium, basketball court, you see the school spirit come out. That's the genius of the place. And then you have, excuse me, the genius of the person, uh, the inner genius. So sometimes it's called the garden, guardian angel or the inner muse. In Africa, they call it the divine twin. It's the resident spirit of the soul present in each person and it involves or own individual unique way of seeing life. I want to repeat that. The genius in us involves our unique way of seeing life. William Stafford has that poem about, he calls it the muse. The muse is the feminine term, the genius is the, is the masculine term. They're very similar. But he says in his poem, When I Met My Muse, he says at the end, or she says to him, I am your own way of seeing the world. As long as you look through my vision, Everything in this world will be a kind of salvation for you. You can interpret from that one of the ways for salvation, saving oneself from the usual disasters, one of the ways there is to be seeing the world in our own unique way. The notion of the genius, of the resident spirit inside each person, is connected to the idea that each person is unique and never will be repeated. The genius of each one of us is to be already uniquely ourselves. I'm going to repeat it because we live in a world that is ruled by collectivism and by massing, right? We have mass communication. We're right near the, a lot of the source of that. We have, it's a mass culture. One of the problems with mass culture is it's automatically against the individual. The individual, it means the undivided person. It means the one who found what was supposed to be found inside them and learned how to live it, and therefore they're not divided within themselves. They're not divided from their soul, and they're not divided from their own genius, but they're living with it. And mass culture cannot foster that. It cannot even support it. It tends to go against it. I'm just saying it in case you're finding life difficult. It's always an upstream swim to become a real person, but in a mass culture, you're swimming against ocean waves. As the indwelling spirit of our life, the genius is the source of our true identity. And if it is ignored or remains under, unrecognized, it becomes the cause of our real identity problem. You get what I'm saying? That the identity we're trying to find and live out 
is hidden within it. Um, one of the cool things happening in modern culture is Eastern philosophy and Eastern spiritual notions are coming into the West. I think it's a good thing because in the East, they say the knowledge you're looking for is inside. Um, and in the West, everybody thinks it's outside and that gives rise to the whole advertising business. You know what I'm saying? Everybody constantly trying to sell stuff to make us into somebody else where we really need the opportunity or take the op opportunity to become who we already are. And in the East, the function of meditation and deep reflection and all that is to find the genius within, or they call it the divine within. And if you think of spirit as the uh, genius, as the spirit within a person, spirit has hints of divine in it. Therefore, you could extract the idea Everybody has the divine in them, and that's why we respect each other, because each person is carrying something divine. You get what I'm saying? I hope you get what I'm saying. Because this is the reason to make an effort to have a meaningful life. And this is the reason, I think, to teach. And this is the reason to fight for things that are meaningful, is so that people get not the opportunity for outward success. Okay, if you can produce that, good. The opportunity people need, what real success, or the kind I'm talking about, is the opportunity to risk becoming oneself. Um, there's a lot of cultures that say, you know, you always think, uh, you begin the world, uh, you enter the world stage left. Did you get that idea? Remember Shakespeare? All the world is but a stage, and we are the players on it. And so we all enter stage left, and then we're all exiting stage right. Did you get that idea? Uh, did you get the memo? No one gets out of this alive. Everybody's headed for the same exit door. Um, and the idea is somewhere on the stage as we're passing through to awaken to the role we claim came to live. And, and, and that awakening involves the recognition of the genius, the mixture of talents and gifts and style and the unique qualities and vision that we brought to the world 